Good day, fellow learners. This is your mentor, your fact check by the Ray Gabus, joining you for our session number 33 here on our NGN Pointer. So as you can see on our cover page, we're now celebrating our 30th year of existing as a test preparations program provider. So that officially would make me now 31 years old. <laughs> Getting aside, that's how, how old I am already. So 30 years doing test preparations coaching. It's actually very fulfilling. So I started when I was 20 years old. So you can just imagine how old I am now. Okay. And I've taught hundreds and thousands of nurses worldwide. We're now catering to the needs of nurses in 33 countries officially. So this is your mentor joining you for this session. And let's begin with our set number 33. But before that, let's first have an inspirational um, exchange of ideas between a passer through an email she sent our team. So let's read the message of Odette Riguso Gonzalez. He's from Ado Medical Educational Center who passed the New York Board of Nursing NGN test last November 25, 2023. So this is her advice to everyone. For those who are asking about my secret why I passed the N next generation NPLEX, it's time to say thank you to Sir Ray A. Gapus and to wonderful and amazing RAGRS team. I took my NPLEX RN exam a couple of days ago and my question stopped at 125 items. Receive good pop-up and pass. I attended the online comprehensive review and attended the face-to-face -face quick fix dedicated myself to it. I am working full time. Focus on the rationale. I watched Sir Ray's Pecha Kucha videos in the morning, answered TOP, and read rationals in the evening. Self-care is a must. I was mostly sleepless. So if you feel tired and sleepy, take naps and sleep well to help you focus and improve your concentration. Three-day quick fix. I attended the face-to-face -face quick fix. It was very helpful because Sir Ray tackled all important concepts that could come out on the test. Grabe, Sir Ray. Nakahelp sa akin yung mga test-taking strategies na na-mention mo during the two-day quick fix plus yung pharmacology book. Okay, so this is actually the pharmacology book that they are talking about. So NCLEX RN Quick Fix in Pharmacology. And this is published by the Ray Gapos Test Prep System. It comes in full color and all the drugs are covered here in bullet form. Plus you have sample question for each drug with the answer. Okay, so this is a must for those who are aspiring to become NGN passers, okay. And then the nursing reminder sheet, okay. The nursing reminder sheet is actually a very small book, but there are a lot of questions here. Sorry, there are a lot of concepts that you can use to answer questions. And a lot of those who took the test would say that this is good for the select all that apply or multiple choice with multiple options type of questions because most of those things here are in mnemonics or acronym. Okay. And then take your time and click NGN. Also test your reading skills. The latter was lengthier to read, so better ready yourself on these kind of questions. That was really tough. I got two breaks ako kasi di ko kinakaya ang mga tanong. Pray and believe in yourself. It's all I always believe it's better to start on a prayer before studying. This is the most motivational tip of all. To God be all the glory again. Thank you, Ray Gapus Review System. I am forever a Gapus baby. Thank you very much, Ms. Odette Rehuso Gonzalez. And thank you for sharing to our watchers, subscribers, and our viewers the recipe that you utilize to ace your NGN test. Okay, so the first question that I always reiterate whenever I have a video that each test taker should ask themselves is, what are the things that I need to study? And when you are answering this question, you need to consider an expert's advice. So let me be 
that expert in today's video. So the first concept that I like to highlight, you may not probably have focused on this concept. So I'd like to share with you some important things that you have to remember related to galactosemia. Now, remember, this condition has a genetic basis, so you need to refer the client, specifically the parents of the baby with galactosemia, to a geneticist, so they could very well understand about this condition. And of course, the main problem in galactosemia is that clients with this condition are unable to break down galactose, which simply means they cannot tolerate um, the presence of galactose in the body because they are not equipped with the processes that facilitates its metabolism, thereby potentially damaging the liver, the brain, the kidneys, and the eyes. So what are the things that would tell you that the baby has galactosemia? Well, remember when a baby is ill, they, they're like our puppies. They are unable to feed. So if a child is not feeding, whether through um, they are un unable to suck from the bottle or from the mother's breast, suspect that something is wrong. Not necessarily galactosemia, but that should be a red flag. And then um, because of the intolerance, they can have vomiting and eventually lethargy, jaundice, cataracts, and sepsis. All of this represents damage to the liver, remember, jaundice, the brain, remember, lethargy, the kidneys, remember, alteration in electrolytes, okay, and of course, the eyes, the patient may have cataract, okay. Now, therefore, what's the primary management? So you have to put the, the child on a lactose-free diet, and you have to avoid all dairy products, from animals and foods with dairy products, okay? Now, foods um, with galactose, um, some examples are, well, you have your cheese, your yogurt, um, fruits like kiwi, okay? Um, fat foods like pizza or pudding, okay? Um, papaya, even your tomatoes and watermelon. This contain amounts of galactose. So therefore, this should be avoided. Now, if you're going to take a look at the picture that we have on the screen, so how would you know that the child could have galactosemia? So focus on the drawings on the side, swelling of the brain, okay? So remember, we talk about the brain being affected by accumulation of your galactose, not wanting to eat, spitting up, or vomiting yellowing of the skin or jaundice, pressure around the brain, so that could potentially lead to decreased level of consciousness, hence lethargy, kidney issues, okay? So check out the urine output, liver failure that could be associated, that could actually be manifested through jaundice, and of course, sepsis, okay? Um, which could be related to infection, okay? Now, if you know functional concepts, like for example, you know for a fact that in galactosemia, the brain could be affected. So what should be your priority to monitor? So you will answer level of consciousness. So if you also know that in galactosemia, there is intolerance to lactose, hence what diet will you provide? Lactose free. And which foods will you instruct the parents to avoid giving to the child so anything that contains dairy products. Now, if you know this, these are all your functional concepts. And this is the method that enabled a 60-year-old to pass NGN on all of these other nurses from around the world, which are now no numbering to hundreds of thousands. We are now serving nurses from 33 countries and counting, okay? The next concept that I'd like to highlight would be your spina bifida. Now, there's one thing I'd like to share with you. Whenever a child is born with spina bifida, remember that the child is at risk for latex allergy. Why? 
because there's a great chance that because of this condition, the child will be subjected to several surgeries. And any client, it's a functional concept, that's subjected to several surgeries is considered at risk for latex allergy. Okay, and those with latex allergy are usually allergic to tropical fruits like strawberries. Okay, so pay particular attention to the association of spina bifida with latex allergy and to the dietary modification that is necessary to address the conditions. Okay, so your spina bifida is a form of neural tube defect that could be associated with um, a deficiency in folic acid. Now, I'd like to highlight two things about folic acid. One, the common source of folic acid is your uh, green leafy vegetable. Now, hmm, how much of folic acid is needed per day? Well, for non-pregnant clients, you need 400 micrograms. For pregnant clients, you need 600 micrograms. Now, if a patient is taking folic acid supplements, you have to ensure that the patient knows that they should not be taking their folic acid supplements with tea because your tea decreases the absorption of folic acid, okay? Now, the most serious type of spina bifida is actually your myelomeningocele, and children with myelomeningocele could also be at risk with hydrocephalus. That's why the head circumference is monitored until the child is three years of age. Now, <clears throat> What is the screening test for spina bifida? Um, aspiration of amniotic fluid, and this would entail testing it for the alpha fetoprotein levels. A high level of alpha fetoprotein would mean that the baby could be having spina bifida. So eventually a common complication in spina bifida would be that the child would not be able to walk normally, okay? Now, so it's very important, therefore, that assessment is done immediately upon delivery and intervention needs to be implemented. Okay. Next, let's talk about your abruptio placenta. So let's take a look at the drawing. So in abruptio placenta, the placenta abnormally separates from the uterus. So the main problem in abruptio placenta is not the implantation. The problem in abruptio placenta is the abnormal separation. And the abnormal separation could be associated with trauma. For example, if a pregnant patient is not wearing a seatbelt and they had motor vehicular accident, they could be at risk for abruptio placenta. And the diagnostic test of choice is actually your ultrasound. So you anticipate that a patient with abruptio placenta um, should be subjected to ultrasound in order to assess, okay, um, the degree of the abnormal placental separation, okay? Now, if a patient has abruptio placenta, how would you decide if the patient should be the priority over a client with placenta previa? Now, remember, abruptio placenta is a level one priority. Placenta previa is a level two priority. So between the two, a client with abruptio placenta should be considered the priority, okay? So remember, don't just focus on the facts. Reflect on the facts and use the facts to make decisions. So the second question that you need to ask yourself is, how do you study, okay? Study using the right technology, okay? And if we talk about technology here at the Ray Gapo system, we have our own set of books. This is my book, NCLEX are in a flash. It's available at the Amazon. The author is me. Okay, and it's published by Jones and Bartlett, USA. So everything comes in full color. So every page contains a functional concept, okay? And then side notes. And of course, you have a question, the answer, and the rationale. Okay, the local version, the Philippine edition of your NCLEX RN in a flash is your NCLEX 311, okay? Our students get this for free and of course it's not colored, okay? Because this is actually the Philippine edition of that very, very famous book abroad, okay? So I asked one of our students, Marielle Ivy, did 
our quick fix help you. This is what she said. Super sir, highly recommended talaga yung quick fix, pati yung 311 po. Okay? Now, this has been considered as the holy grail for NGM passers. Okay? And then, this is what she says. Paulit-ulit din ako sa YouTube nyo. So, may I invite you to please do subscribe and watch my videos. I get to update my YouTube channel every week. Okay? So, it's entitled NCLEX Gapos Mentors. You have all the videos here and the updates are being done on a weekly basis. Plus, may I share with you our Quick Fix course shells. So if you want anytime, anywhere learning, this is the way to go. You have here your QBank with NGN questions, videos. If you are just simply lazy about reading after a, a very tiring day at work. So you have short quizzes, long exams, name it, we have it all. And of course, the third and most important thing that you have to consider if you are preparing for your NGN is a conducive environment. Here at the Ray Gapo system, we have our own simulation room and we have a conducive class size. So may I invite you to join us in our next generation NCLEX RM Flex, the most flexible test prep class for the NCLEX RM. The fee starts at 3,499 and it includes your choice of live face-to-face -face class, live virtual class, on-demand and limited video recorded lessons, your QBank and three books, plus your NGN strategies. Okay, so once again, this is your mentor, your fact check buddy, Ray Gapus at your service and saying thank you for the trust. See you in my next video.